So we're here at Bardstown Bourbon Company right before our single barrel pick. The thing that's gonna be really cool about this, it's gonna be a 95% rye, but it, the barrels are, are a percentage of cherry wood. So instead of just your traditional secondary finish, it's actually the staves in the barrel are a toasted, cherry as well as the oak. So that will be very cool. Every barrel pick that we do, we try to put together a, a kind of an all-star, but yet a fun group. Bourbon is a fun, sociable experience. So the selection process that we do is also sociable. So today we've got a couple people that are local to Bardstown that are volunteers that help us. So this is kind of a thank you to them. Uh, of course, we've got Chad and Sarah from It's Bourbon Night that are part of it and uh, Steve Coombs, who does all of our premium education. But Steve also plays a very important role in that he's the one that does all of our tasting notes. And of course, it's a tough gig for me to be a part of, but as the president of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival, it's one of my roles is to help be a part of that. And, and Stacy Pritchard, who does all of our distillery relations, is on here. So it's, it's always a really good group. Sometimes, like today, we'll have a couple people from other distilleries that will come in. So that's part of the fun, too. So when we can, we put uh, a, you know, someone from another distillery Maybe it's one of my board members, but they'll join us on a pick too because it's again It's fun and it's a very collaborative industry and we want our, our selection panel to be reflective of that Well another distillery pick checked off the list, huh? That's right And this one's been on the list for a while the Bardstown Bourbon Company uh, We were fortunate enough to get the invite from the folks at Kentucky Bourbon Festival where we try to go every year Yeah, so we're gonna show you a little bit of that pick process how uh, We got to our conclusion or the group's conclusion and what it takes to be a Kentucky Bourbon Festival pick I think the coolest thing about it is like you all any of you who are attending would have the chance to buy that bottle at the festival That's right. Yeah, which is pretty awesome. So let's get back to picking See, see I thought that, that it was the most obvious like yeah. Oh, this was this was toasted. This is definitely finished. Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is yeah. like you can smell and taste. Okay. But when you look at the label, that's what you expect, For sure. right? Yeah, yeah. I want to know that the you know. The, you open it up, you're like, right. yeah, there's no doubt, and and that's why I, I like see it. What we did here today at the Bardstown Bourbon Company, which is one of my favorite distilleries, they last year released their Origin Series, and one of the three whiskeys that came out with that was a 95% rye mash bill. Fantastic, and we got to pick a rye barrel today. It did get quite contentious, did it? We, we, we had some, you know, well, I like that one, I'm not sure I like that one, you know, you're wrong, we're right, whatever. This one it's gets like sweeter. A little abrasive with the hook. Do you, on the finish, it actually gets sweeter yeah, than yeah, the initial. I, like and then yeah. I liked A, me too. Oh, me too, absolutely. Okay. So we talking, we talking out? To, to kick, kick. Yeah. Yes, to kick out. out. To progress things along, yeah. we're going to eliminate number four. D. D. We can't even decide on if it's four or D. Exactly. And we're trying to pick a... Oh. So we're gonna eliminate D. That's the, the fun of a barrel pick. Sometimes you get to argue and, and hate on somebody that you really don't hate on. You're just, you're just you know, cheering for your own side. And this is probably the most divided our panel has been on any selection. It's and it's, and it's just, so we're blinding these. So let's, uh, let's see what we got. So these are our, our two favorites. These are our two favorites, and we did not agree on the, the one to kick, which is the first time this entire year that we didn't all agree to kick one. So we fought over the one we're going to kick, and now we're going to fight over the one that we're going to put in the bottle and put the Kentucky Bourbon Festival on. Show of hands, who favors one? I'll pick one. I'm So there's two for one. Hey, we found the bourbon night pick. Hands for number two. I think I like two. Okay, I think everything's wow. been reversed. <laughs> wow. Did you switch ours up? Like two. So, I so also like two. The barrel that we got was one of four. I believe it was 117 proof, a little bit over six years old once it gets bottled, and it is fabulous. So it was kind of neck and neck there for a bit. Uh, Chad and I ultimately voted one way and the rest of the group voted the other way. But I will say I kind of flip-flopped back and forth throughout the process, and all of the options that we had were good. There was they no were. clear, like, immediate kick this one out. That's the thing, no, we, we couldn't agree on which one to, to kick out. This one was one of the more difficult ones, I think. But mm -hmm. it's good to know that we stood on a united front. We did. Uh, that would have been the Bourbonite pick, right? Obviously, uh, because Sarah Don't think I, we didn't ask. <laughs> yeah, we asked. Uh, eh, it wasn't in the cards, but, that's, the cards but that's okay. But we did really like the one that got picked too, mm -hmm. just for different reasons. And we had our own reasons for uh, liking the one that we liked. Our but... patrons know we have our own kind of flavor profile our own vision when it comes to mm -hmm. our picks and so it kind of makes sense that we would end up on an island it was just a great experience to have 
those four great whiskeys before us, any one of them, which would have been fantastic in a bottle, but we fought hard for number three, right? Isn't that what it was? I voted hard for number one and I defected in the blind tasting, which shows you you should never just trust your own instincts all the time. Trust your palate, do it blind, don't ask for proofs, don't ask for age or anything. Just go with what your palate says. Yeah, good point, Steve. Just go with what your palate says, what your palate tells you. We couldn't agree with that more. Um, we love it when when picks end up going blind with uh, the two that seem to be the favorites. We're mm -hmm. very, uh, very pro on that, obviously. Yeah. Okay, so the tasting is done, and we actually got to- But the tasting uh, is just beginning. <laughs> bring home a little uh, sample straight from the barrel, you know, so. Just so we can remember what it tastes like. <sighs> that is like chocolate cream mousse kind of. Yeah, you can tell it's a rye, but it's not like, uh, you know, it is a 95.5, uh, 95% uh, rye and 5% malted barley, but it's not one of those eucalyptus forests in your, oh, yeah. in your face type of thing. The either. first note I get is not minty, herbal. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's a little bit of baking spice in there, but it's mellow. Okay, well. Ooh. Yeah. Same thing on the palate. I mean, there is a touch of that mintiness, baking mm -hmm. spice. It's pretty mellow for a rye. It is, and I think it, it uh, can be a bourbon drinker's rye too, mm. uh, at the same time standing up to a rye drinker's rye, if that kind of makes sense. It's a little bit of a, of a hybrid, right? So it's, it's hitting both spots there without really standing completely in one lane mm. or the other, I which is that. nice. Yeah. Of course, we don't have the one that we were liking uh, to drink beside this, but without having that, I gotta say, yeah, I would absolutely vote for this. I'm very pleased with, yeah. you know, what we ended up with. All right, well, we wanna hit pause and tell you about our home on the internet. It's whiskeyambitions.com. It's where you can get the t-shirt and hat that I'm wearing. Oh, you know, those Glen Cairns we were just drinking from earlier. Uh, also, bottle cut candles, our new uh, elemental elixir cocktail syrup, and more that's always coming soon at whiskeyambitions.com. And you can become a patron at patreon.com slash itsbourbonite and join our community for as little as one buck a month, and us and a bunch of patrons just got back from a trip to Ireland. That's right. Uh, now, just by being a patron, you don't get a trip to Ireland, but you do get the opportunity to participate in trips like that. That's right. Uh, our barrel picks, after the episode exclusives, and more. There you go. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. We'll be right back after this. Like we said earlier, we've been to the Kentucky Bourbon Festival before, and we've mm -hmm. actually covered it in videos before. Um, but in those videos, some of the feedback that we've gotten is like, gee, this looks really cool. You know, people who stumbled upon our channel for the first time seeing that video, they say, this looks really great. Oh, wish I had known about it before, because we always put the video out after the fact, because that's, the <laughs> that's how footage works. You capture it and then you release it, yeah. but by the time it comes out, the event has happened. It's like fishing. So that's kind of what we're trying to do this year, is get, give you guys the jump while you can still get tickets. All right, well, let's hear about some of the things that are new at the 2024 Kentucky Bourbon Festival. But what's new is we've really amped up our single barrel program. A couple of years ago, three years ago, I guess, when Randy and I were talking about how to do this face-to-face -face because it was a post-COVID year, was we could have a single barrel program. Back then it was only eight that we considered. This year we may have as many as 35 single barrels. All these single barrels are sold at the distiller's booths rather than a bottle shop like we've done in the past. So that gives the buyer the opportunity to engage with the master distiller or a brand ambassador, people who make the whiskey that they like to drink. So that's really kind of cool, right? You want that thing from Beam, you want that thing from Bardstown Bourbon Company, you go there and you get those those bottles and you can purchase them and there's gonna be a lot of them. Part of what we're doing new and, and my background, I came here from Churchill Downs, Kentucky Derby. The double deck experience is something that people love. You spend a lot of money to get right next to the track, but you're up on this double deck and you watch people. You love people watching, right? And the Kentucky Bourbon Festival provides really great people watching. So the cigar lounge that we added last year will now be on the second floor of this two deck structure. So. Uh, and within that, you can come up and have the public experience and mix and mingle with our friends from Deployment Scars, or you can, six people can rent a 10 foot by 10 foot semi-private suite and actually have it for an hour. So you can sit there on your nice, nice leather furniture and a coffee table and enjoy your cigar, looking over the railing, watching, you know, people watching. So that's something that's new this year. And then the first level is gonna be our festival store. So if you're there and you want to buy your, your swag, your merchandise that has the KBF on it, 
uh, that's where you do it on the first floor, but we're running out of space. So it's literally, that's our option op, you know, to go up. You, you kind of visually, when you come in the main gate, you look and you see the, the brands that you expect and then they deep dive into the craft area. And that's really the fun part as the producer to see we've got 61, 62 distilleries that are going to be here this year. And over half of them are the craft folks. And, and they, they compete, but that they complement each other. And the, the end result is the people that come here, the real enthusiasts, get an experience they can't get anywhere else in the world. And that ends if you're only able to sample. Forget the fact that you can now buy bottles legally from the distilleries. If, if the experience was you could come in and have 60 plus distilleries and 200, almost 220 different brands and expressions to sample, that would be an amazing experience. But you can sample and say, I want to buy that and take that home with me. And chances are you're going to be able to buy something at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival that you can't get anywhere else in the world. So that really is something we're always mindful when we're putting this together. The Kentucky Bourbon Festival for years would, would be all day. It would open at 10 or 11 in the morning and run till midnight. And we had bands and a beer garden and all of that. Uh, and we really, it would, the whole model was to keep people there. I mean, it was the place to be. And as we refocused the festival, we wanted to make sure that not only our guests got a very unique experience by coming to the Bourbon Festival, but we didn't want to monopolize their time. We have an amazing community. We've got 10 distilleries within a couple miles of the, the Bourbon Festival and then obviously throughout Kentucky. We wanted to make sure that people came in, had the experience and could go out and see the distillery. So a couple years ago, we, we made the choice to, to uh, close at six and people can go home, go back to their hotels or Airbnbs, freshen up, and then go out and experience Bardstown and whole, all of Nelson County and do distillery tours. So these distilleries that have already been booked up for, for months in advance for their daytime tours are now doing evening events. So kind of hard to get once a year kind of uh, events. So that's really what, so you have Lux Row and Bardstown Bourbon Company and a number of other, Jim Beam will do that with their kitchen table. They'll do evening events that kind of expands uh, their ability to have that touch point with the consumer that they wouldn't normally do during the year. And now you start seeing the bars and some of the different distilleries are coming into Bardstown. It might be two hours away from Bardstown, but they're coming in and doing events in the evening just to kind of showcase their brands. And that's really the intention that we wanted to do. So that's a great point. And something that separates the Kentucky Bourbon Festival from just about any other bourbon festival out mm. there is after you're done with the activities in the day and early evening, you have the rest of the evening to go to all these other distilleries that are either in Barstown or so very close. And so many of them are hosting their own events. So, mm -hmm. you know, if you've not come before to do the Kentucky Bourbon Trail, it's almost like everybody's putting on their best show for that week. Right. So you can kind of experience it all. Yeah, like uh, after one year, we went to Log Still. Yeah, they and, had a concert. Uh, yeah, there and, and, and we watched bands and that, that was cool. That was very amazing, we yeah. Know, in the past, Bardstown Bourbon Company has done their own event. Mm -hmm. Jim Beam does their kitchen table. Right. They do a dinner uh, there usually, or like a cookout or something. Yeah, it's really cool just to see what every distillery has to offer. So the Kentucky Bourbon Festival started in 1992, and it really started as a kind of a community celebration with the, the, the bourbon makers at the time just kind of hanging around talking about their whiskeys, enjoying it. And they would look around and see people were like being attracted to hear the stories. The early iteration of it was, okay, let's package this. People want to hear about this. And this was back in the mid nineties when people weren't buying the bourbon and, and this boom, this renaissance that we've had hasn't hadn't happened yet. So the, the early versions of this festival really kind of is still the root of what we build on now. They still like to sit around and talk about each other's whiskey and they sample and it's just kind of fun to see that so i mean it became a tourism attraction and i've, I've always said it, it lived for 30 years before i came in the the leadership the volunteers the community can never quite get they wanted to grow it at a time that that it the community didn't want it to grow and then when it was time to package it and grow it they just couldn't quite get their arms around it so it, it's kind of like raising a child you know when you get into the 20s you got to figure out who you are, but by the time you're 30 years old, you better know who you are and what direction you're going to. So this festival has kind of followed the same uh, history of, of, of raising a child. And now that we're in our 30s, we know what we're doing. And it's all about the people that are, that are making the whiskey. And that really is what makes us special.
The Kentucky Bourbon Festival, we, we launched a new website about a month ago, and it's really easy to navigate, very clean uh, scrollability. And then our tickets went on sale April 16th to our Bourbon Insiders, and April 17th was the public offering. And uh, I'm excited, but also somewhat disappointed for, for our fans that are following us. Our VIP packages sold out within minutes, like they have the last couple of years. But the good news is, with that three-day general admission, we call it the, the Bourbon Taster, you you get to experience all 60 distilleries. All the, the sampling is included. You still get your Glencairn glass. You've got multiple stages. So if you go to kybourbonfestivalrightnow.com, you can uh, buy your tickets. On social media, we're at KY Bourbon Fest. So Instagram and Facebook and X, you can find us there and you can s sign up for all the, the latest news. And, and this year, uh, kind of as we've evolved and become more of a world-class event, uh, I'm wearing a watch from Oris timepieces, so it's the official timepiece of the Kentucky Bourbon Festival. We now have a pen, so we have a writing instrument by Retro 1951. So we ha have a pen that's featuring Canton oak barrel uh, staves that have been made into pens. So as part of that experience, when you come into the Bourbon Festival, you also get kind of these one-of-a-kind keepsakes that you get to take home that you're not going to be able to get anywhere else but at uh, in the, in the Bardstown and the, the Bourbon Capital of the World. Well, there you have it. Uh, as they said, the the VIP packages are sold out, but the good news is, is all the regular, the three day or the one day um, tickets are still available for you. Yep, and you can get those by clicking the link down in the description. And you can see us there. We, we will be there. We will be. In there. what capacity? I don't know. We're usually just wandering around with the camera, um, but say hi to us if you see us. Yes, please do. Please do. Well, that'll do it for us. Uh, hey, if you haven't subscribed already, you can do so by clicking right up here. There are suggestions of other videos down here. Hope to see you over there in one of those. Thanks, Sarah. Thanks, Chad. Okay, until next time, see you at the Kentucky Bourbon Festival.